welcome to the wonderful world of water. So, um, I'm just using this to illustrate a, a difference between a molecular formula and a structural formula. And we'll go on to talk about some of the properties of water. So, the molecular formula for water, everybody knows, is H2O. All that tells you is the number of atoms in the molecule. So, uh, it tells you that we've got one oxygen, and for every one oxygen we've got two hydrogens. Now, we'll be looking at molecular formulae of uh, more complex uh, molecules shortly. The structural formula reflects how those molecules are bonded together, how those atoms are bonded together inside the molecule. So, for water, the oxygen is bonded by a single covalent bond, to a hydrogen and a hydrogen. So why is water so special? What's so great about water? Well, one of the things about this, um, this molecule is it's what we call polar, just like in an ice cap, polar. Now what that means is that some of the molecule is negatively charged and it's a very small negative charge, so we use the Greek formula delta, Greek letter delta. Delta minus, a very small negative charge, and the hydrogens have a very small positive charge. So that means that the charge, the electrons, are not evenly distributed across the molecule. Oxygen actually has quite a big nucleus um, because its atomic number is eight. <laughs> um, in, in relation to its electron shells, whereas um, hydrogen is much smaller. So the oxygen is what we call electronegative. It drags those electrons towards itself. It's a little bit greedy. Nitrogen pretty much, and don't tell a chemist Ow. this, nitrogen pretty much Thank acts well. in the same way in that it draws electrons towards it. And that's quite important for its properties because if you can imagine you've got two molecules of water, we've got a slight negative charge here, a positive charge there, opposites attract, and therefore they hold together more tightly than they would otherwise. Now that bond has a special name, it's called a hydrogen bond. They're actually weaker than covalent bonds, but if you get a lot of them together, uh, it tends to confer strength on uh, some of the later molecules we'll deal with. And it certainly makes water act in a way that makes it essential for life on Earth. So, you might have done this in class, um, putting drops of water on a penny. And you'd think, if you sort of had to guess, mm, maybe 15 drops on a penny. But because of hydrogen bonding and the way that water behaves towards other water molecules, you can often get much more. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. I could go on, but you can see that the water is is forming a sort of a bubble. And that's because the water molecules are bonded together by these hydrogen bonds and at the surface there are more hydrogen bonds and this leads to this sort of bubble formation. So, hydrogen bonding is very important. It also leads to what we call surface tension. So in this beaker here, I'm hoping you can see this, We've got, I've managed to float a paper clip on the top, and you, you might be able to see at the bottom there's one that fails to float. Um, that's being held by surface tension. And actually there's a, a group of organisms, that, a couple of groups of organisms in aquatic environments that exploit that surface tension and use it as a habitat. So pond skaters sort of distribute their body mass across their, um, across their legs and they can skim across the surface of the water, picking up anything that falls in and gets stuck on the surface tension. Uh, whirligig beetles, they're the entertaining little black ones that whiz round in circles, also can exploit surface tension. 
and uh, the largest spider in Britain, the raft spider, can also employ surface tension to skid across the surface of the water and grab its prey. Surface tension is dependent on these hydrogen bonds and certain things disrupt hydrogen bonding and one of those are the uh, phospholipids that we find inside of washing up liquid. So if I pour washing up liquid in this, it should disrupt that surface tension and the paper clip should fall into the water. So to get rid of the surface tension, here we go, I'm floating the hopefully skid it over to the oh, other side. But the surface tension's gone and the paper clip just falls straight through. So let's get rid of that sloshy beaker. One of the other sort of things that hydrogen bonds confer onto water is that when water turns into its solid state, it forms a sort of a very open lattice and that makes it much less dense. So ice will float on the top of water. Now, that's great if you're, you know, wanting to cool down on a hot day and you make your lemon squash and you put your ice in and it clinks around at the top and, and makes your water cold. But for aquatic ag organisms, far more significant is the fact that the water at the bottom, if you imagine this was a pond, the water at the bottom is at four degrees, where water is at its most dense. The ice formed by the cold is at the top. So you've got all this free water underneath the ice to still uh, carry out your living activities in. Even better than that, uh, ice is quite a good insulator. So you, if you think about Eskimos living in igloos and if you get caught in an avalanche, you know, if you sort of can manage, if you're still alive, you can dig a hole um, and sit there and it will warm up and it will keep you warm. It's quite a good insulator. So it tends to mean that the water underneath doesn't freeze quite as quickly. So you will always have some open water underneath um, a pond. So water sort of sticks to itself, if you like, by this hydrogen bonding. Um, and that phenomenon is called uh, cohesion. It coheres to another molecule. But we also have, and I lost my colour achieving. Can you see it? Help me! <laughs> magic hand of help. Yeah, the magic hand of Dr. Savile. <laughs> so, water uh, also has another property and it will add here. So it will link to something that has uh, hydrophilic liking water properties. Um, we can show this in a capillary tube. So this is a very, very narrow bit of glass tubing. It's all a bit wet now. And if I stick it into this blue dye, so all I've done is mix some water with some blue dye, you can see that it has kind of sucked some of that water up. Now that is just because the water kind of like crawls up that uh, hydrophilic lining and adheres to the inside of the glass tube. Um, again, important, the water transport columns, the xylem, uh, columns in plants are very, very narrow, and so the water will creep up the xylem. Uh, it's not the major force that causes movement, it's a very small force. You can see it's only moving up that capillary tube a couple of millimetres. Um, but in plants where you've got a, a lot of them and they're much narrower, you can go up a, a little tiny bit further just by capillarity, not a major force. So, significance. Why is water so important? Well, it's one of, because of its hydrogen bonding, it, uh, it takes quite a lot of energy to move it from state to state. And by state to state, I mean from going from a solid into a liquid or even into a gas, sort of steam water vapour. So, um, it's actually liquid between zero, when it freezes, and 100 degrees, which is quite unusual.
for an element of its size. If you think about sort of you know all the things that you uh, that are very volatile, all the solvents, um, your perfume is quite a large molecule um, compared to water, but it's a very small molecule, making it volatile, meaning that it evaporates from your skin, forming a gas, which is what you can smell when you wear perfume. So water, for its size, is uh, it would be unusual for it to be a, a liquid, and it's just because of the hydrogen bonding. So this thing about absorbing a lot of heat to break the hydrogen bonds to change state uh, is, is quite key for life on Earth. So we say that water has a high specific heat capacity. It means it takes a lot of energy to raise the temperature of water by just a few degrees. So big bodies of water, like the oceans, like lakes, uh, even sort of quite large ponds, have quite a stable temperature. We say they're thermally stable. And even your cells, it actually takes quite a lot of heat energy to raise the temperature of the water in your cells, which is great because it keeps it nice and stable, thermally stable, for your enzymes to work. In addition, it has a high latent heat of vaporisation. So you need to put a lot of energy in to actually break those hydrogen bonds, convert the liquid into a vapour so that it will leave. And in mammals, we use that for sweating, we use it for keeping cool. So you're actually losing a lot of heat as you sweat and it evaporates. Um, some non-endothermic organisms also use um, uh, cooling mechanisms involving water. Uh, there's certainly groups of lizards that sort of dribble on their disgusting uh, dribble on their fronts, dribble on their chests when they overheat, and that will the evaporation will help them cool down. So you've got there. You know what's what's the property? High latent heat of vaporization. What's the significance? Helps an organism cool down. We've got the properties of cohesion uh, and adhesion, which will, um, which aids water movement up a plant. So water is actually sucked through a plant, as I'm sure you remember, through GCSE. So transpiration involves the water evaporating from the leaf surface and pulling all those cohered molecules up behind it, maintained by the adhesion of those water molecules to the side of the xylem vessels. So again, you know, what's the property? It's hydrogen bonded together, the molecules are adhered to, uh, cohered together and can be pulled up in a transpiration stream. They adhere to the inside of the xylem vessels. I've forgotten any other properties. Transparency. <laughs> okay, water's also, <laughs> we can see through it, but, oh, we can see, oh I can't see you, it's all gone steamy as it's, as it's uh, condensing the water on the outside of the coal bit. I, I can see you now. So uh, it's transparent, really, really important, um, the, especially for aquatic plants like algae, that the light can penetrate through the water and they can get some, that only goes for so much distance. I really, I think that's it. I just, I can't think of anything else. <laughs>